this week on the Movie Rebrew. Ben and Josh went and checked out a 10 year old movie. Sin City 2, A Dame to Kill For. That's the full title. I was walking down a dark and dim alley. Sin City, you can spit on the ground. It's a movie rebrew. Hello and welcome to episode 124 of the movie rebrew, the show that goes out and watches some movies sometimes. And then we, you know, drink beers, and then we talk about them in front of a green screen. My name's Josh Spicer. I'm Ben Harold. Nice to see you again, people. It's been a while. It's been a while for M&M's, too. Look at this. Today, we saw Sin City, a dame to kill for. This is Sin City 2. Uh, I think Sin City 1 came out in 2005. Oh, it's been like nine years, I think, they yeah. said. Nine years in the making. I remember when I first saw Sin City 1, and it did so well, and then automatically they said, we're, we're already starting on Sin City 2. Mm -hmm. That was like nine years ago. Instead, he made like Spy Kids 5D. And a couple machete movies, yeah. and Grindhouse. So, yeah, he did all that stuff. And I think the gap between movies really hurt this movie. Well, because the first one was so groundbreaking, it's been spoofed so many times, and the technology is, what we're doing right now, just really, really well. Yeah, so that wow factor is not really there anymore. No, because we know how to do it. I'm doing it right now. But I, but I remember seeing the first one, and it was just like, man, this looks so good. And although the second one looks really, really it good. It looks amazing. It looks just as good as the first one. See... It, it does. And it's a whole... It, there's no new bag of tricks. There's no... Nothing new, really. Um, it's the same thing you get with the first one, just with more lipstick and more boobs and more... There's lots more boobs. Yeah. And more um, decapitation. Yeah. But it really didn't see... I don't know, because... There's three stories, and I liked the first one, first Sin City movie, because yeah. the, the stories seem to intertwine and, and kind of affect one another. Yeah. In this one, there's three stories, and the only one kind of holding it all together is Marv, which is the best character. Yeah. He's amazing. But it really just seemed like, here's a short story, here's a short story, and here's a short story. Oh, and then it's over. So it didn't, it didn't seem as well thought out or put together as the first one did for me. Yeah, I totally agree. I, f I found it a little bit confusing at times, especially when they, because the whole timeline of Sin City, because it's like, because Hardigan's there, but that, it's now happening after Hardigan's dead. But I remember the first story in Sin City, Marv dies, and Marv is in this for the entire movie. So I don't know what's happening. And, and the first thing is Marv like, oh, I have amnesia. So maybe that's just supposed to send off the entire movie is just like, just go with it, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I, I found it kind of confusing at times, but I didn't really hate it. No, it was I, fun. I thought it was fun. I thought it was so fun. It was pretty fun. That's because I loved the first movie. And it was... Love the characters. I don't know. Jessica Alba, they were trying, they were trying very hard to make her... Tough. Tough and act heartbroken and blah, blah, blah. But it wasn't convincing at all. The only convincing thing was her dance. She danced in every scene. It was it's a like, lot of dancing. It's like they took the best parts of the first movie and just made those parts bigger. Mm -hmm. Marv, he was in every storyline. Yep. They, every story involved going to that strip joint. Mm -hmm. And they were only there once in the first movie. Yep. And then you got other characters that are featured more who were, you know good characters in the first movie Miko and like with the head slicing and stuff uh, yeah it's just and every new character felt like they weren't gonna be there long and they were yeah 
Every new character that was brought into this movie was killed off. Yeah. And they kind of seemed that transparent in in the movie. I don't know. I really enjoyed Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character and his storyline. I thought that was pretty good. But it seemed very short. And I guess that's another one that brought the stories together, too, with the Yeah, mayor, but his but... was so... Yeah, he was in every story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... I don't know. It just seemed so... F for a movie that was nine years in the making, it seemed like it was Rushed. put together in a, in a night. Mm -hmm. You know? And I haven't read Sin City comic books, so I don't know if these stories are taken from the same trade, which is a dame to kill for. Um, so I don't know if some of these stories were just made for the movie. It seems to me like a couple of them were maybe made for the movie. And the whole noir thing is, it's laid on really thick, but it, it they really, I think they ha almost had to lay it on thick because everyone's seen this kind of style from them before and done and done again. And they really wanted to force the noir aspect of Sin City. And I don't know, I, I, I love noir. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. All said and done. It's, uh... Four bottles, four and a half, four and a half. Uh, yeah, I'll say I'll I'll give it four, maybe even three and a half. Like there were a lot of parts that I really liked. I love seeing. It's just I entertaining. Love, I love seeing Marv all the time, but mm -hmm. like I said, I think they just took the parts that the fans liked the most and injected that into the second one, and then put in all these stories. Yeah, you don't have to think much, and it's nice on the eyes. Yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, that's the best part of the movie, is that it looks awesome. All hail the Yeti. Never let the monster Please. out. N -n 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 new on DVD Blu-ray for August 26th. Blended! Brick Mansion. The Love Punch. On DVD. The Love Punch. <laughs> Bell. Legends of Oz! Dorothy's Return? Sounds like a horror movie. No, it's a porn. Cinema novels. Cinema novels. That sounds like a porn. Cinema <laughs> novels. Cinema... Say that five times fast. Cinema novel. Hey, thanks for joining us and watching this new episode of The Rebrew of yep. Movies. Yep. Brought to you by TheRebrew.com. I mean, that's where it's located. And brought to you by. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only thing. It's also on CalgaryMovies.com. Yeah, I know. Oh, they don't. Some, maybe some of those people don't know. Do you know that? Do you? If not, go there now and see for yourself, because it's right there on the front page. <laughs> that <coughs> rabbit is cute. Is it a carrot? Mm-hmm. Oh. Hey, Ben. Yeah. Recommendations happen right now. Um, I'm going to recommend you go s check out Blackfish. I watched this last week uh, on Netflix. Documentary about uh, SeaWorld and uh, their killer whales in captivity. And just the whole bad name that they have and how they get... They get a bunch of like former trainers. Uh, from SeaWorld to give their input on it. And it's actually really, really, really good. I recommend Boyhood. There's going to be a natural cut there. No one's going to know. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Hey, Boyhood. Uh, yeah, it's so weird to think like Ethan Hawke and they are just like, yeah, cool, I'll sign on for a movie that's going to take 12 years to make. Because it's Richard Linklater. I know, but... They're like best friends. Yeah, I guess so. But it's so cool. And you really haven't heard anything from this kid. And now you will. Because now he's grown up. And stuff. I don't know. It's, just, it's a really cool movie. And it's going to definitely be talked about during the Oscars and stuff for sure. Yeah, I've heard really great things about it. Richard Linklater is an amazing director. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for watching. Wait, we got beers. It's still warm. 
I know. 